Norma Foster, who's going to give us some really amazing content today, I'm sure. How are you doing, Norma? I'm very good. How are you? Very well, thank you. Yes, absolutely. Excellent. Is it getting a bit sunny out in your area as well? Not yet, not yet. It's sunny, it's sunny in this room though, because I've just seen all the lovely people who are attending and quite <laughs> a lot of people who've been on the first and second webinars. It's great to see so many turning out today. Fabulous, lovely to That's see lovely. you. It really is. Um, just one quick thing before we move on, actually, it'd be quite interesting. Um, just to put into the chat, if anybody has um, attended all 17 of these webinars, I'd be quite interested to know if there's anybody who's actually been through each one of them. Um, I think that'd be quite cool if you've actually been able to make every single one of these, whether it's a live one or a one that's being kind of recorded and, you, and you've watched it again separately. But um, yeah, it'd be, it'd be awesome if somebody actually has been through all of the 17 webinars so far. And it, there's, again, we, we're kind of starting up season, season two of the webinars as well soon. So we're going to probably have another 17, 18, 19, 20 webinars coming as well. So loads and loads of great content yeah. from the two programs. We're seeing lots of good messages here. Not far off. Some been to all of them. Missed one, missed two. That's fabulous, isn't it? Great It's stuff. really good. I can, I can see good Karen good there. Webinars. Karen's been quite a yeah. few. Yeah, lovely. Fantastic. Right. I'm going to let you crack on the number if that's all right. Okay. Fabulous. Thank you, Stephen. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Fabulous to have you here with us today for this third in a series of three webinars. And um, what we're going to be looking at today is really digging deeper and just looking at some of these more advanced techniques in LinkedIn to help you really put the rocket fuel into the engine to get your LinkedIn profiles moving. So um, what I uh, just wanted to say, how are you all doing? Drop in the chat as well, how you've been getting on with the homework um, that I've asked you to look at from session one and session two. How's that been working for you? Have any of you got improvements in your SSI scores as yet? So just let us know, it's great to have that uh, feedback. And I'm just going to switch here to the uh, presentation. If you bear with me, uh, forgive me two seconds. And it's coming now. So we should be up and running in just a second, forgive me. Okay, that should be it. Fantastic. So, fabulous. So, let's get going. So, 2002 LinkedIn started off with Reid Hoffman in his bedroom, launched in 2003 with 690 million people now, busy on LinkedIn and doing amazing things. Um, one of the things that Reid Hoffman, who's now stepped back from, from LinkedIn and handed over the reins to Jeff Biner, but one of the things he was particular about, every single person that connected with him, he would make a huge effort and he would extend a small gift, be it online or offline, just nuggets, little golden nuggets that he could pass on because what he wanted to emphasize and stress was the actual value in the relationship, the value with connecting with people and actually looking at that win-win scenario in this networking context of what people can do for each other. So not selling, looking at passing on that benefit. And that's what we're going to be deep diving into today. For those of you that haven't been on webinars two and three, I'm, uh, sorry, one and two, I'm just going to do a really, really quick recap of those for you. Um, and just um, have a look at what we've been doing, which is essentially setting the scene and preparing for you to launch your LinkedIn campaign. So my promise, however, is 12 minutes a day, because I know that a lot of you are stressed about time and particularly with all the pressures of Brexit and COVID and all these things going on in the economy that, you know, time is something that we don't have a great deal of. So I'm looking at 12 minutes a day that you can commit initially to getting your LinkedIn profile up and running and sorted. 
And that's all you are going to need on a day-to-day -day basis to really keep the momentum going and make sure that LinkedIn is working well for you. You have also got a workbook here that's available. Not And we'll keep that fairly quick, quick, but happy to have a chat and give some help. Sorry, Norma. Sorry, Norma. I just had to jump in there a little bit. Um, I think you froze there for a little bit. I don't know if it was just my screen, but I've seen somebody else in chat said that you froze in there. So ah, okay, you all might right. Go over that last little bit again. Sorry. Yes, sorry. Um, apologies. Thanks for jumping in, Stephen. Okay. So yes, I'm just saying um, I'm going to do a quick recap of one and two. Um, you have got a workbook that's been made available um, that you will be able to jot down actions and reference some of the, 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 the screens. But of course, all the webinars are available on YouTube for you, uh, both Digital Drive Durham and the Leeds Project, if you want to go and have a look at them. So I'm going to quickly run through uh, what we've been doing on these webinars. So in the first webinar, we looked at your SSI. This is a score that LinkedIn um, have um, created so that you can assess how well your LinkedIn profile is performing. And it gives you a benchmark, which is a really great benchmark. It'll give it in percentage terms, and it also explains when you click on there how they actually uh, come up with that score. And it's measured every day. So if you get down to your LinkedIn profile, you can see that score going up. We looked at your QR code, which LinkedIn provides you on your mobile devices, and you'll be able to check how to do that when you review the video, if you don't already know. And we looked at the five key principles of working online, building trust with your audience. You know, uh, having a great presence on your website, making a great first impression. People only read the headlines, so it's about getting short, impactful messages across. And above all, putting yourself in your customer's shoes and building that trust, telling your customers what you can do for them, not just telling them what you do. And of course, on LinkedIn, what's really important, that brand of you, really putting forward a strong, confident, clear picture of you as the go-to expert in your field and what you can do and offer to people who are networking with you on your LinkedIn profile. We then looked at your target audience. Who would you really like to be connected with on LinkedIn, both in terms of business development and your own CPD, your own professional development, you know, for content and, and for your own learning and creativity. And we delved briefly into the advanced search. And because of that, we obviously needed to get close to your keywords. What keywords would you use to describe you? And what keywords would you use to describe the types of people, the customers, the prospects that you want to be connected with. And then we did a deep dive into profile. What makes a fantastic LinkedIn profile? How do I create a profile that makes a brilliant first impression and performs at its best? And one of the things you've all worked towards is getting all star status on LinkedIn, which will show on your profile page in your dashboard, which is just a, a bit further down. Uh, from your picture and your, your headline, which only you can see, by the way, nobody else gets access to that. In the second webinar, we then did a really deep dive into your A-list clients. Um, and I suggested a good way for you to get to grips with the types of organizations and clients you want to be connecting with is to go back and do a customer database analysis look at customers over the last one to three years if you have that information available and really select the criteria that are important for you it might be location size of business turnover sector what types of products and services they produce but you know are they lovely people to work with um do they pay on time etc etc all of those things that are really important to think about and and really profiling the the ideal clients that you want to connect with and looking at that data and what emerges and how do I um, 
you know, make make the best of that. And, and then deep diving into the customer profiling. Uh, and I've got a few things to show you shortly as to how you might go about doing that um, quickly. We then looked at Boolean search and how to connect and what's important in connecting and we'll run through that quickly. And then once you've connected, what do we then do to follow up? How do we get a good relationship going with those customers? So let's just do a quick recap of the last one and see how you're getting on with your homework. And please jot comments down in the chat box um, for, for Stephen and I to have a look at when we come to the Q and A's would be really great. So there we go. Do your customer database analysis. You might actually want to do a survey with your customers just to delve a little bit deeper and group those customer organizations once you've reviewed them into the top five that are the most important for you. And then within those organizational groups, you're going to be identifying the key decision maker in each group and doing a detailed profile for each of them. And I suggested you might want to take a look at HubSpot. You've got a great uh, set of templates and guidance on customer profiling that you might find useful. And then once you've developed those profiles, and I know some of you have done this because you've sent me some lovely messages over the last week, actually get out there and interview your customers. No more than 20 minutes, but that interview will give you keywords and key phrases which are so important so you really need to listen to your customers some testimonials and maybe some key case studies you can ask them what their aspirations and anxieties are over the next year and we're going to be looking at that later in this session by way of creating com content that is really compelling for them. You know, what's top of their agenda in the next 12 months and what are they really concerned about? Because if you create content around those themes, guess what? They're gonna be really interested. And probing their communications preferences. Where do they hang out? Where can you find them? And who else might be there that could be of interest? And using all of this information to then create your core marketing messages and your preferred approach. Boolean searches are really great in the advanced search box. So combining keywords with operators like and, not, and or written in capitals. And guys, you can find out more about how Boolean search works, particularly on LinkedIn, but also incredibly useful on Google. And Boolean search in LinkedIn helps you to target your A-list clients even further and give you much better, much richer results. Then we looked at inviting people to connect and that you have 300 characters with which to invite people to connect with you. So make good use of those 300 characters. Look at their profile. You're looking for hooks like here with Remigius in, in Lithuania. Uh, we have a, a, a person in common so I've quoted that, kept it to about 281 characters. You can um, use Word, create that message in Word and check the character count, Word count bottom left, or there's a great tool called Letter Count, which will actually do that for you, which will hook in with your LinkedIn profile. 300 characters, make sure you're checking out their profile and creating something that matches the profile, the tone, the approach and is friendly and accessible. Um, David Subucci um, is a, a, a client um, or a colleague that I connected with. Having um, looked at his profile, I actually bought his book on Amazon, read it and created a 300 character message around that and just the power of story when you are creating those messages is so powerful and he's gone on to be a really superb connection in in Canada uh, and we keep in touch quite quite a lot so then when you're connected what next and in the webinar we went through the fact that 70% of leads will have a higher conversion rate if you follow up with them in less than an hour. And on average, 50% take five days or more. So you've got a real competitive opportunity there to maximize the next steps once you've connected 
by going straight into communication with someone. And that's going to be really important when you get down to sharing posts and articles and commenting with people and gathering followers because the maximum impact of that follow-up as we will go through shortly is within that first 60 minutes. We call it the golden hour. So we're going to be building on your knowledge of how to maximize that golden hour um, to best effect. And once somebody's accepted your connection request, what next? You know, conversation's the new lead. So how are you going to start building that relationship with people? And definitely on LinkedIn, no sales pitches, no selling. Starting a conversation. Often it's good to just give of your experience and expertise, having looked for hooks or ask a question. Uh, reviewing the profile for information and talking points that you might have in common. Um, following up in 24 hours and working out for yourself, you know, what's a good hit rate? If I'm going out to X amount of connections, how many people do I expect to actually be getting into conversation and maybe meeting up with and taking the conversation offline? Be patient and take care. It is really important that you get this right. This is about creating real relationships that actually deliver for you. And test your approach with different types of messages, different people, different um, key target markets. And finally, in the second webinar, I scheduled a tool with you, and I'd love to know how you've got on with this, called crystalnose.com. That will give you a personality profile for the particular individual whose profile you're looking at. They need to be a first degree connection and they will give you tips and advice on what their priorities are, um, what types of conversation and communications will suit them, what messages will be the most impactful. So Crystal Knows is a fabulous tool for you to use. You get 10 free goes. And actually the monthly subscription is not all of that, uh, all that expensive for you. So engaging with new connections, send a welcome message one, once um, they've connected, review the profile for hooks and start sharing content. And that's where we're going with this session today. Schedule a call perhaps, and you can use great online tools like Calendly or such like, or even, um, if, if you use Microsoft, you can, you can use your, your um, Microsoft account teams for doing that. Um, introduce to a contact that might be useful for them. Share news and advice on your sector from your customer profiling. You'll know what they're really interested in or ask them for expert advice. People are always really, really pleased um, to maximize on their experience and expertise of the past years and actually share their advice uh, with you as well. And we looked at sending voice messages on LinkedIn, and I wouldn't overdo it, um, but certainly sending the odd voice message to people if it's very heartfelt is just a lovely way to set yourself um, aside from the competition. And above all, add to your follow-up process. You know, create a process, jot it down on paper, that always helps to clarify it for you. And, and make sure that you, you follow that process as, you, as you're doing this. So very briefly, any questions from anybody before we deep dive into content and creating powerful content that builds rich reputation and results? We have got some um, questions that have come in already, Norma, if I can go yep. through them with you. Let's just take a couple then, Stephen, if that's okay. Yeah, no problem. Um, a couple of these are kind of similar anyway. So we've got one from um, Karen just saying, hi Norma, can't seem to get above 68 on my SSI score. Any suggestions? I think possibly you might answer that anyway as part of the session. Um, well, Karen, what I would suggest to you, if you go onto the SSI platform and have a look at the different elements, because it will give you a percentage across the four criteria that they use in the algorithm and have a look at which of those areas is, is lacking and could do with some, some, some TLC and read up on it because really there are some lovely videos and some suggestions there that, that will help you to uh, create a better result. But you know, the next stage, you might find some really swift improvements and the next stage 
um, will um, take a wee while longer. And actually I would suggest just from intuition that this is going to be about engagement with people and creating conversations and comments and such like so uh, hang on there because i think in this session a lot of the suggestions i'm going to give you around posting content and when to do it and the right time to do it will actually support that increase in your ssi score quite significantly Perfect. And along the similar lines, Norm, we've got one just said from um, Stephen saying, my SSI is still at 75%. I need to know how to improve my engage with insights and find the right people to get my score up. But how? I think, we'll see. I think it's about being more proactive and using advanced search techniques and going out and really targeting people and starting conversations. Um, so maybe upping the connection requests, but then really engaging in conversations with people and above all, um, you know, looking at what content they are um, sharing and putting out there and getting into the conversation with them. Comments, not just likes and shares and at least four words or more and just looking at trying to keep that going. But we're, we're going to go through that uh, later on in the session, Stephen. Just one last one, um, Norma, just from um, Stephen. This is the last one we've got. Um, so Stephen tried um, Crystal, knows, and got a deluge of emails trying to upsell. So he deleted them. So okay. Just be aware of Norma there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it, it does happen. Actually, when, um, you know, when, when I signed up, I didn't get that, I must say. So it's useful to know. So, yes, um, you know, um, it's a shame, but a great tool. So if you do want to come back to it, you, you might find it useful, but um, acknowledged. Thank you for the feedback. Perfect. Wonderful. Shall we crack on, Stephen? Yes, feel free, Norma. Yeah, no problem. Okay, thanks. So in this session, we will be looking at building reach reputation and results and planning um, you know, your 12 minutes a day at the very end and doing a bit of an overall recap. So the first thing I would really like to look at is recommendations. When your profile has reached all-star status and you've got 500 plus connections, LinkedIn then has to work a little bit harder to um, pick the cream of the crop and to know which people are the most proactive on LinkedIn, but above all, what they look at is recommendations and the level of recommendations that you have on your profile. So I um, would strongly recommend to you that we take a look at this and on your recommendations, which appear on your profile, you have both received recommendations and given recommendations. And I think it's really important to do both. And, you know, there are some people that say, well, actually, you only need a few because, as you can see, um, there are two that appear on your profile and they always appear in datal order. You, as, when they were given, you used to be able to sort and prioritize them, but you can't do that anymore on LinkedIn. So they do come in datal order. And I recommend generally that people try to get two or three new recommendations at least every month just to keep those fresh you can delete the older ones that are no longer relevant or, or don't matter anymore quite easily but i think this is something that is incredibly valuable and we had a few questions in the last session about well you know how can i use my recommendations and actually i do take recommendations from linkedin use them on the website. I use them in proposals and bids and tenders. Um, so they are incredibly useful and it's a resource that's always there. I do, however, generally always go back to the client and ask if they are happy for me to use them in that context because they've been given specifically for LinkedIn. And generally there's no problem with that because LinkedIn is a public resource anyway. So, in recommendations, what I suggest that you do is that you actually talk to people on the phone or face to face. And the best time to ask for recommendations is when you've reached the end of a project 
and you want to um, just maximize the, the feel good factor because it's gone well, you ask clients for a recommendation and you might want to suggest a few things that you'd like to be recommended for and perhaps even prompt with keywords. Um, I tend to recommend that clients do not or that you do not write the recommendation for the client because they always come up with things that are just amazing and lovely. And it sounds very natural when you allow them to write the recommendations for you. Um, you have 3000 characters available um, in the recommendation box. So it's much, uh, much more than just a testimonial. And actually, recommendations should be very heartfelt and very genuine. If you are giving recommendations, they are quite tough to write, actually. They do take a bit of time. But giving someone a recommendation, particularly if they haven't asked for one, is a great way to engender strong relationships. And LinkedIn does prompt when you've given recommendations for them to reciprocate. So that, that might be something that could be useful for you. So LinkedIn recommendations, they are proof of your value and a reason to choose you, something that people can check out. Um, at least 10 on your profile would be my recommendation to a visible. They're keyword searchable, so they are given priority in the algorithms. You can only on LinkedIn get recommendations from first level contacts, and they are lending credibility and authority. Um, and, you know, again, it's for you to decide when you want to use uh, those recommendations and where and when you want to give them. But in your um, workbook, um, and I'll come on to that in a second, there's a tool where you can start jotting down notes on that and deciding on your process. We'll come to that in a second. So here is the screen. Um, the lovely Sarah from Swinburne Medicine. There's a box here that says more. And when you click on that, you can see down below, you've got request a recommendation or recommend somebody else. Um, so, or, or recommend Sarah, uh, forgive me. So that is where you would do it. So you go to the person's profile and you, you pick either one of those options. My strong recommendation is do not do this process if you are asking for a recommendation before you've actually spoken to the person face-to-face -face or online. It's just much nicer and you will have much more chance of success if you've actually spoken to somebody. So this is an example of a recommendation that has been written that I thought was particularly heartfelt and stood out to me as a great example. I'll give you a second to read it. And then I've got a second one here, um, which again, it's just, it, it's almost writing them as you would speak. Um, and I think that's one of the tricks here with LinkedIn and using some of the keywords that are important to you. Um, so it's that sort of personal approach and getting your keywords in there as well. Um, so in your workbooks on um, page 11, you can tap out uh, or, or, or look up here, workbook page 11, jotting down um, who you would like to go out and ask for recommendations from, what particular points and keywords you would like to ask them for, and then giving recommendations to people. Who can you give recommendations to and what would you be recommending them for? And you can jot down on the bottom of that page your LinkedIn recommendations process. And if anybody hasn't got that, um, workbook then drop uh, Stephen a note on the chat and, and we'll get that out to you. So great process to have there and I would suggest you know two or three recommendations each um, month would be fantastic. Now there's another thing on LinkedIn called endorsements and, and skills and they are just quick clicks essentially. They're quite short, they're just a click to say, yep, yeah, this person is great. And I get asked, asked quite a lot, 
Um, are they worthwhile? You know, should you give them? And yes, absolutely. And I think again, authenticity and being genuine here is is um, important. If you have no experience of the person and, and that authentic approach, then don't, don't do it essentially. What is important to know here is that the three top skills appear on your profile and then you can click to see more. Um, if, um, and, and what I would suggest is that you use the three top skills that are the most important for you, because the ones that are at the top will get the most endorsements. It's just the nature of things. You can have a maximum of 99 um, skills on your profile, 50 maximum. To be honest, the skills I think are, um, I would recommend no more than 20. I think any more than that, and it just becomes a, a, a bit crazy. So stick to 20 if you can. So the other aspect that I'd just like to suggest is using media to respond. And one of the things that is great to do on LinkedIn when you're starting to get into that conversation with people is recording a short video to send to contacts, uh, which can make a great impression. And there's not that many people doing this. And I think a heartfelt video message is a lovely way to actually engage with people. Um, voice messages. 30 seconds, maximum 60 seconds. And again, video and voice, I would recommend you keep them fairly short. Um, it is important um, not to make too many demands on people. If you did want to record the video with captions, there's a great tool called Clippermatic. I'll mention that at the end again, that can allow you to do captions on LinkedIn really readily. Uh, bearing in mind that 85% of people watch video without sound. So I think it's important to think about getting the captions on your uh, video and make it personal, make it technical, uh, speak from the heart. Um, you know, I think they're the kinds of videos that are the most engaging on LinkedIn, the most heartfelt ones. And prospect, have fun with it, be brave, just give it a go, try it out and see how you get on with it. Then your profile, and I mentioned this when we were talking about profile excellence, is actually uploading rich media to your profile. And I just wanted to show you this because I think it's an important point to make. The temptation is to cram in too many. And here's the one that's got um, six uh, different um, pieces of collateral up there. And actually when you just put two up there, they look more attractive, they have the text next to them and much more uh, interesting and compelling for one of your um, visitors or um, people that you're networking with to actually click on and, and then download the document. But you can upload those to your about section, you can also upload those to your experience section and they then become almost like your personal professional website, um, your LinkedIn profile, and the more media that you have on there, the better the mix, the more interesting your profile looks, the more results you will get in terms of SEO. So um, that was a short section on recommendations and endorsements. Any questions um, from you guys? How are we doing, Stephen? Hi Norma, um, I'll have to step in, Stephen, because for some reason his Zoom um, crashed um, okay, unexpectedly. That's great. Thank you very much for doing that. Have we got actually any back orders? So I've just oh, back. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, then I'll let you take over. Happy <laughs> Sorry. <listeners>, guys. <laughs> just in the nick of time. I think that's we've got um, a couple of questions that have cropped up. Um, apologies, everybody. I had a complete nightmare. Everything just right. well done for getting back. <laughs> um, so we've got a question um, from Jill just saying, um, what do you mean by rich media? Rich media, video, podcasts, presentations, you know, the, 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 not just text and images, not just a brochure or a leaflet, um, something that's, that's, you know, a bit richer. So video, podcasts, images, presentations, that kind of thing. 
fabulous. Um, Steve's um, pretty happy. He says it's all making sense so far. Good. Excellent. Michelle just asking, um, I couldn't even get it to work. So I'm not sure what that's in relation to, because obviously my, my Zoom didn't I'm work. I'm sorry <laughs> to hear that. Uh, bear in mind, if you've missed bits or you want a quick chat, uh, I'd be happy to do that via LinkedIn afterwards. Fabulous. Um, Daniel's just asking, um, can there be a negative perception on sending voice notes or videos to a random connection? Um, possibly. And I think you need to look at the profile and, and make a judgment call. Um, Crystal Nose can be quite helpful on this, telling you whether they're more a visual person or whether they just like facts and figures and keeping it short. So that can help you to define what sort of person might actually appreciate that more personal approach. Um, and I do like getting the odd voicemail message personally, but if all the messages come by a voicemail and I have to listen to every one again because I want to remember what was said, it, it can become a little bit irritating. So I would just use them now and again, not, not overdo it. Fabulous. Um, we got one as well just asking, just to check about rich media in the about section, is this just a case of adding in links? Can you include images? You upload them, you can, yes. So you can include files, um, whatever they are, um, audio or, or visual, and um, yeah, you upload documents, etc. then. It's a pretty easy process uh, to do from your profile. Again, for all of you, um, there is a help section. So on your navigation bar at the top in the black bar, you will see a circle which says me. And when you click on that circle, it drops down and there's a section called help and if you're not sure how to do any of the things I'm suggesting then you just go to the help section and it will uh, it, it gives great advice step by step on how to do each of these things if you forget. Fantastic, got a few more as well Norman do you want me to go over these ones? Uh, yeah we'll take maybe two more. Okay cool, um, Nariko's just asking um, for me can you add YouTube links? Um, you can add links to YouTube videos, yes, or Vimeo, Vimeo uh, or YouTube. Excellent. Um, Steve, just ask again, what's the URL for clip -matic, please? I have got a screen grab at the end. Um, Stephen, could you look that up for me? I'll look that up at the end, uh, no problem. I can't remember whether it's a .co.uk or not, but if you could look that up, maybe pop that into the chat, that would be brilliant. Fabulous, no problem at all. Um, I think just kind of one last one, Norma, just to kind of finish this off. Um, Karen just asking, please, can you let me know whether SEO only affects headlines or also a description as in education? Yes, it's all of it. It is all of it. Um, the four most important places for your keywords are your headline, your about section, your current and past work experience, but LinkedIn looks at your entire profile and the search engines as well. We will come on to posts and articles in the next section because link, LinkedIn looks at both, but Google only looks at articles and not posts. So there's some win-wins there that we'll come on to shortly. Excellent. Um, I have now, unfortunately, because I've rejoined the webinar, I have got no chat information at all, guys. So if there was anything else that you wanted to know, um, you know, specifically about the program or something else not related to the webinar that, uh, that might be useful, just let me know in chat because I've got no, no information anymore now. Right, <laughs> but, brilliant. Which is great. Right. But thanks for everybody putting their, um, their LinkedIn connections into the chat as well. Um, I think that was quite a good, uh, good little thing just to make all those different connections for everybody. So that was uh, quite useful. Brilliant. thing. All right, Stephen, thank you. Thank you. So now, leveraging your amazing profile that you've worked really hard for the last two weeks to get into good shape and creating content and posting with purpose. That's where we're heading now. And I love Gaping Void in New York. They do wonderful little cartoons. Um, Hugh started off just doodling on the back of business cards in New York when he was out of work. The good news is they're hyper-connected. The bad news is that's all they are. Okay, so we've got all these connections. What are we now going to do with them? How are we going to engage? And get your workbooks at the ready, guys. Um, here we go, starting a post. And um, this is on your homepage on your LinkedIn profile. 
or writing an article and we'll be looking at um, now how we go about actually creating these and you'll see to the right next to it uploading images uploading videos and uploading documents it's something that is pretty easy to do and on here you can send the post to anyone and you have 1300 characters in your post available to you and we will be talking at length about hashtags i recommend three hashtags on a post no more than that you can share with anyone you can share with anyone and twitter if you have linked your twitter account with your linkedin account um, LinkedIn will automatically send that out to Twitter obviously only the first 280 characters of your post you can share just with your connections I recommend anyone or anyone plus Twitter um, and you can send it out to groups etc if you want to if you have something specific and I always allow comments on the post I like to keep everything completely open so that you get maximum engagement and then clicking on, on done. So 1300 characters maximum, only 280 available on Twitter. Now, posting with purpose, because it takes time to create great posts. So how can I make sure that my posts are working as hard for me as possible? Content is king, connection is queen. So we're gonna focus on your A-listers. And you know from your profiling work, what their top three priorities are in terms of what they want to achieve this year, what's top of the list, where's their minds and hearts at the moment, and what their top three anxieties are. So you should be in a good position to understand what types of content they are going to be most interested in. The posts are best for lead creation, not articles, and we'll come on to that uh, later on. And I would also recommend that you set time aside for content creation, whether you do that once a week, once a fortnight or once a month, but really setting time aside to create the content in your content plan. And I have got a suggestion for a content plan uh, coming up shortly. Think, plan, do. Once you've got that plan in place, then it just takes the pressure off and makes it much easier for you to do that. Now, there are lots of tools out there like, um, well, Buffer and, and, and others, where you can actually schedule in content and it does it automatically for you. LinkedIn definitively and distinctively prefers content that is posted directly into LinkedIn. So my recommendation is if you have the time, to actually post directly into LinkedIn wherever possible. Authenticity rules, so speak from the heart and write posts as if you were talking to people, don't forget your keywords, and write to reflect your expertise. Early engagement is absolutely critical. The first hour, um, and on average, in that first hour, that golden hour that I was talking about that we want to maximize, your post will go out roughly to about 2% of your audience. And I know it doesn't sound like much, but from all the research we've done, that is pretty much what we think in terms of how your audience is seeing and engaging with your content. And if you um, just think your home page. You know, how many times do you actually pick up people's content on that home page? The more you and that A-lister are communicating, connecting, sharing, commenting on each other's content, the more likely that content will appear regularly in your home feed. If there's no interaction between you after that first post has been posted, or no interaction after you follow someone or connect with them for a week, they drop off the landscape. So that early engagement is really critical if you want to keep that conversation going. The algorithms really love that um, early engagement. It is a real kickstart. And you've got thumbs up and claps and hearts and the quizzical guy, I'm not sure I like him, 
quite as much the quizzical chat because not really necessarily sure about you know insightful curious etc but hey you have a choice there and that engagement is great you can also share the content um, and that's always a good thing to do but comments are top absolutely top uh, and they are by far the most important aspect of engagement in terms of your posts working as hard for you as possible now comments please make sure that you are using at least four words in your comments otherwise they don't even register with linkedin's algorithms so a key tip for you there to remember so you can be using engagement shares or comments or a combination of all three and actually you know there are some people that say just mixing it up and using a combination of all three which i've kind of developed a habit of doing is quite powerful discussion is key and getting that discussion going is pretty important so create your own original content yes you can share other people's content as well but what linkedin and the search engines really love is you creating your own original content if you are just sharing other people's content um the search engines and LinkedIn will still pick it up, but actually what we find through research is that people looking at that content don't enjoy and don't engage with content that you're simply sharing anywhere near as much as your original content. So no scheduling tools, you will be penalized. And if possible, and this may sound odd, if possible, don't post links to external sites. We know that LinkedIn likes to keep people on LinkedIn. And sometimes you just need to or want to, and that's absolutely fine, but don't make a habit of doing this every single time because the engagement will drop if you are putting links onto external sites and it drops actually quite a lot. Comments on posts, forwards minimum at least to get that engagement in the search engines and LinkedIn algorithms demand a minimum dwell time of four seconds on a post for that to also register in the algorithms. So some really key metrics here for you guys to make sure that your content is working well for you. And you can see LinkedIn just wants some genuine conversation and interaction and engagement going on here. So all of this is saying just that. In my humble opinion, in my opinion, humble opinion, no selling. Listen to Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, this is television, not ads. And it is, you know, he says for every hundred pushes, for every hundred messages that are going out with interesting, clever, entertaining, funny, nice, informative, your opinions, your expertise that is going out there, you're allowed one sales message. Avoid any sales references whatsoever out with that this is networking this is engagement and of course you can check your statistics on your posts what works and what didn't work um, we know that you need um, 10 um, interactions on posts for them to register in stats um, so that is an important aspect to know and get smart with your content hooks just make sure that you are actually posting content that your people, your audience actually wants to see. Now, in terms of hooks, content hooks, what do they actually constitute? And I'd just like to give you some ideas here in terms of what kinds of hooks work well. Advice posts, giving people advice. And if you're looking for inspiration, there's a pretty good resource called Answer the Public. And you can go in there and and um, look at any, oh, there's so many different areas of expertise, different sectors, different things going on that you can just start doing some research, which is really, really interesting. We've got reward posts where you're giving kudos, you're actually writing things, just saying great job, well done, you know, whatever the context might be. Activity posts, what are you up to these days? What are you doing and updates? There are what we call attack or contentious posts. You know, if there have been some 
policy changes or if the government's bringing in new legislation or if suddenly XYZ has been slashed and you don't agree with that, you might actually want to go on the attack. It might actually be somebody arguing for it and somebody else arguing against it in that particular post or even a video interview, but they can be quite interesting. And I know when I bought um, my new laptop, I actually watched two techies arguing out between Microsoft and Apple and each of them had really good points and it was very, very informative. Announcing successes or news. Um, I know when, um, you know, there's a, there's a, uh, for the best example is when the budget comes up and um, people do roundups of the uh, Chancellor's budget uh, summary and, and put that out, or you're announcing successes where, um, you know, there's been a win or an award or something like that, which can be really useful. And just acknowledging posts, you know, maybe going back with feedback, you've done client surveys or you've had engagement with people um, where social proof has been shared and that's just been acknowledged online. And one thing that we haven't got yet, but it is coming, I've got colleagues on the developer groups in the States who are doing quite a lot of research on this at the moment and I'm pretty excited about it. Polls are being tested and are coming. So asking questions on LinkedIn, you may or may not have that facility now. We never quite know how LinkedIn is going to be rolling that out, but hopefully that will become, be coming imminently. And it is actually um, a really, really good tool to have. And I think you'll find engagement with your audience useful with those polls. Inspiring and motivating people, telling great stories, sharing your experiences, and there may be personal elements that, um, you know, you just want to tell a story about your 60th birthday celebration or, you know, something that's, that's happened. And sometimes those personal stories can get a huge amount of engagement. So content styles and preferences, guys. Short or long form text posts. And in terms of text posts, you can, you can, you know, choose to keep them really short. You can, you can write longer text posts. They will do reasonably well, but we know if you attach images to posts, they will do much better. Text posts with images perform by far the best on LinkedIn than anything else. And I would recommend two to three per week. Um, images, you can use resources like pixabay.com, pexels.com, Unsplash, I love, they've got a huge library of top quality um, images that you can search um, all sorts of different keywords and sectors. One, three or five images work best. Don't ask me why, that's what the research demonstrates. One, three or five images. Um, Document uploads. You might have noticed when you are creating your post, there's a section that says documents. And this is a really good example of a profile, John Esperian, who has created a fabulous document section. You can go away and have a look at that and see what John has done. And that can be a whole raft of different documents. They might be giveaways, they might be checklists, they might be um, guides, um, all sorts of different things, and obviously a little piece that he does with that, but a really, really useful resource and something that I would hope that your audience would be really keen on. Um, when you are writing content, um, I would recommend that you do tag people in, but there are a few things to bear in mind when you are actually tagging people in. Preferably do it with their permission or in the knowledge that they are going to be happy to be tagged in. And LinkedIn algorithms love it when you tag someone in and they respond and there's a conversation that takes place. If that person doesn't respond, if that person then removes the tag or exits the conversation, that has a negative impact on the performance of that particular post. 
So you need to think very carefully when you are tagging people in as to who you're tagging in. And my strongest recommendation is that you tag in no more than five people on any particular post. Um, so video posts, um, less than 4% of the posts are video. So I think you've got a really good opportunity there to set your content apart, but you need to make sure that it is great video. 85% of video on the web are looked at without sound. So you need to make sure that you're using something like Clippermatic or the like to actually um, ensure that um, that video is going to perform well for you. <clears throat> so here is the video editing software, Quick. Um, and I, I think it's quick.com, um, Capwing. And I can't see that for the for the navigation bar. Unfortunately, I haven't put the URL on there. So Stephen will get back to you. And of course, iMovie to edit and add subtitles to the video. And they're all really good, relatively easy to use video software um, tools, editing software tools that I hope you'll find useful. LinkedIn Live in beta is coming. Not all of us have it as yet. Um, but I'm hearing good things from those people that do. And um, hashtags and um, which hashtags to follow and which hashtags to use. I've got a separate section coming up about those, but I am recommending that you use um, the hashtags, uh, obviously the hashtag and the word, no spaces, um, capitalize, uh, no symbols, punctuation and spelling um, and keeping those hashtags clean and using three to five hashtags at most, no more than that to get the very best. And I would strongly recommend you stick with three. And make sure that you use the right niche hashtag. And coming up, I've got um, the top 30 hashtags on LinkedIn and I've got a link to the top 100 and we'll talk about hashtags um, a little bit further down the line. Now, what if my posts don't perform? Uh, and what might the reasons be for my post overperforming? And this is some research that was done by uh, Adrian Dayton of Clearview Social in the States. And they found five key reasons why your posts might not be performing. And of course, this will also affect your SSI score, Karen, you were asking me earlier about this. So one of the key reasons is that you are oversharing and we recommend a maximum of 20 posts per month, no more than that. Um, so, you know, probably two, two to three a week, you can do a few more. But what we know is that you shouldn't be sharing more than one post a day. If you do share more posts, LinkedIn's um, algorithms give the second post you put up that day 50% less power and the third post will probably be ignored completely. And this is some research that a lovely Dutch chap, um, Richard van der Bloem, did in the, in the Netherlands after having reviewed over 3,000 posts and he did a superb bit of research work on this. So we know actually that this is really important. So no more than 20 posts per month maximum, not oversharing. Um, you never add comments of insights onto posts and we know that posts with comments, your insights, your thoughts, your feelings on the posts, get an average 56% more clicks than those that simply share a, a click to an article. So what LinkedIn is saying here is, you know, we want some genuine conversation and network going on here. So a 56% increase in posts that get that comment, that conversation going. Remember, more than four words and more comments going backwards and forwards. You don't share enough. And it may well be that you're not sharing, but if you share once each business day, 
60% of your network will see at least one item you post in a month. So it just means the more you do share, the more your content will uh, be put out there for people to look at. LinkedIn users who post at least weekly get four times the number of clicks per share. So all of these things are going to help your posts perform really well. You don't tag companies or people. And again, we've talked about the tagging, making sure that you tag companies and people effectively and that you are tagging people who are going to be engaging with you. That's reason number four why your posts might not be performing. And sometimes you post things just poof, for the hell of it. It wasn't planned in and you're just putting random posts up there that are not getting much engagement, they are really, really, really going to compromise, negatively compromise your uh, post's performance and the performance of your profile. Don't post randomly. You need to be thinking about posts, creating content on posts that works really well, and making sure that you're getting that engagement in the golden hour for those posts to perform really really well for you anything other than that linkedin just switches off and stops paying um, great attention to your posts so some top recommendations there for you guys now when it comes down to articles um, i'd just like to mention again that your posts are picked up by LinkedIn. They're short form and they are really important for that lead generation, that benefit um, on LinkedIn in terms of search. Your posts are not picked up by Google and other search engines, but your articles are. And they do help to drive traffic and SEO. They're no longer as popular on LinkedIn, they are longer one to 3,000 words, 40,000 characters. They obviously take longer to write um, and people have less time, so they may not be reading them in depth, but they really do drive traffic and SEO. So what I recommend is writing one article a month, publishing it on LinkedIn, maybe putting it on your, your, your blog in a reduced version or an adapted version on, on LinkedIn, and using snippets of information from that article around that theme to drive individual posts that you are creating over the course of that four weeks. And I've got a month by month plan coming up for you to have a look at. One article a month and make sure that article is full of value, insights and best tips. And where do you get those from? Well, from the customer profiling work that you've done, you know exactly what your audience wants and needs to hear about from you. They're one to 3,000 words and we recommend that you do use strong images, perhaps even video and links on those articles. And I always like to start articles with a compelling image. You can get them from some of the resources I've shared with you and I've got a few more to share at the end. But that image and copy combination will work the very best for you. Make sure that you write a really catching headline, guys. And what you might like to do, which I think is a really nice touch, is do a nice about the author section that you can use again at the bottom of each article. And here's what I've put up there, an image of myself, and then just a short summary of who I am, what I do, what my offer is, and then the let's have a virtual coffee and a chat and my email at the bottom and connect with me on LinkedIn at just a quick click there to actually go back through to the profile and, and connect with me if they haven't already done so. So you might like to clone that um, author profile as well and use that on any articles that you produce. So article best practice, Make sure at the end um, that you have a call to action um, and your um, author status. Encourage comments. Make sure that is targeting your specific A-list audience. Use hashtags. And again, just a modest three to five hashtags with that article. Pick the ones that are the most important. And if you are writing that article and you get interrupted because it takes longer, you can actually save it and come back to it later. So it has a sort of save and sit function 
and then you can go back to it. And once you're really happy and you've checked it and proofread it, you can then publish that article. So I'd like now, having just mentioned hashtags, to just give you the top level in terms of hashtags and how best to use those on LinkedIn. And you'll see three hashtags at the top. That's a recommended number I suggest you use on any of your content. Now, all of this is research done by Richard van der Blom in the Netherlands and shared by Andy Foote, who's just a fabulous LinkedIn guy. Um, uh, that, that I um, am in contact with a lot. So hashtags influence the algorithm, fact. If you don't use hashtags, there is 50% less impact on your um, feed. And that is quite significant. So make sure you are looking at those hashtags and you can look at the hashtags that LinkedIn offers up. There's over 200 hashtags on offer or better still, create your own custom hashtags and use those. One of my hashtags is business by heart. That's mine. And you know, there is conversation going on around the hashtags. So you might want to check that out. Three is the magic number. Too many negatively affects the reviews and switches people and the search engines off on LinkedIn. And rather use no hashtags at all than use more than six. So I'm very grateful to um, Richard for doing this research. It was quite extensive and in depth and has been quoted widely uh, in, in various different sources. So these are the uh, screen grabs of where you find your hashtags on your profile. And if you scroll down, you will see recent activity, you will see groups, events, and then at the bottom left, you will see followed hashtags. And these are the ones that you are following that will be visible to you on your profile. And you can click more and it will show you all of the hashtags that you have followed. It's very easy just to click and unclick if hashtags have changed and you no longer longer want to follow this one you now want to follow something different you just adjust the clicks accordingly and you've got masses and masses of choice there so the sublime andy foot spent a lot of time in july 2019 researching and he does this every year researching the top hashtags on LinkedIn in 2019. And there they are for you guys, the top hashtags on LinkedIn. And Andy produces them on his website. He does ask for a contribution. If you feel so disposed, you can download them and compare them to previous years. For some crazy reason, India, hashtag India is by far the best performing hashtag on LinkedIn. But I have downloaded those and make a contribution to Andy and uh, have picked out the ones that are high performing that I would like to maximize activity around. Uh, I just think it's really, really important to make the most of these guys and to really consider what is going to work well for you. So hopefully you'll find those top hashtags really, really useful and you will be able to start using those to uh, empower your content. Now, there were some questions last time about using tools to boost your LinkedIn performance. So I just wanted to urge a word of caution and say that there are a raft of tools that actually can do more harm than good. And I have managed to secure a, a list of all of the tools that are currently banned on LinkedIn. So if anybody suggests any of these or offers any of these to you, then please decline and swiftly move in the opposite direction. And I think a word of general caution just in terms of using any artificial or semi-artificial way of trying to create the same results with networking that isn't completely genuine, isn't person to person, I would steer well clear of. This is about authenticity. It is about developing real relationships and real value with your audience online. 
that is to mutual benefit and I would stay well away from anything that is not uh, directly um, to do with that. Now, the final thing that I want to share with you is that actually having done all of that research and giving you all of these tips and suggestions, we know that there are uh, five or six LinkedIn editors in the UK and they are listed on LinkedIn News here, which I've given a screen grab for you. And if you just Google LinkedIn News, it will bring this up for you and you can find it on LinkedIn as well. And it gives you all of the LinkedIn editors across 75 um, or 75 editors across 15 countries. And essentially, they have the last shout. These guys are deciding um, over and above what the, the initial work of the um, LinkedIn algorithms is, these guys decide what gets promoted and what doesn't get promoted. So there is a human sort of, sort of random element in there. And sometimes things happen and there's just no rhyme or reason to it. Uh, but you might want to take a look at LinkedIn News and the editors that are performing this function in each country. So a very quick recap and then we've got lots of time to take your questions. Comments are king. These are a summary of what works. Comments are king and engaging in conversation. An engagement within the golden hour, that first 60 minutes, is going to make by far the biggest difference to your content. And actually, that is something that you want to receive, but as a courtesy, it is also something that you can be thinking about extending to other people. And of course, that engagement means at least four, four words and at least four seconds spent engaging and engaging with people's content effectively, really joining in the conversation. Engaging with followers to keep them in the loop. If you follow people or people follow you and you're not engaging with them, um, and swift engagement will have the biggest impact, but if you're not engaging with them over a week, then they will just fall I think you might have frozen again there, Norma. You have all of these followers, but after- Hi, Norma, I think you might have frozen again there, sorry. Oh, I'm bit. sorry. One participant's raised a hand. Okay, Stephen, can you just tell me if it's back? It's just come up with a message here saying, internet connection is stable so i'm going to keep talking until i come back yes i think you're fine now i think okay, you're fabulous yeah. i am hardwired in but um unfortunately it's obviously a little bit contentious I today shall i, I go back to the thing. beginning um i think probably just over the last point is probably okay i think the other point i think Got the golden hour and stuff yeah yeah so the golden hour was fine so engaging with followers to keep them in the loop so if People are following you, you need to be engaging with them. Start up a conversation, keep an eye on this. Uh, share content regularly. If people are following your profile or following your company page, then it is important that you are messaging them and that you are sharing content that they are going to engage with. And if you are at that level, you can actually switch your button from connect to follow which is something that can be useful to do. But if you are going to do that because you've got such a high level of, of, of connections, you're actually going to go to follow, then, um, then you need to be creating regular content and you need to be taking a different tack by way of actually engaging with those people. Use three hashtags only and never tag more than five users. And above all, you want to be actually tagging people who you know will respond and join in with the conversation. 
comment on posts you want to see more of. And I would even go as far as to suggest not replying to comments on posts, but actually adding a new comment. That um, works better for both parties, actually. Um, replying is acceptable, but the replies get buried and actually putting a new comment in there will um, just give you more SEO benefits. So something to bear in mind. And have conversations in post threads. Just make sure that you're really picking that up and joining in the conversation. This, guys, is all about quality and not about quantity. So I'm going to say less is more. This is not about volume. You can actually get away with doing relatively little content, but actually making sure that it's powerful and it will work really hard for you. And what you need to be looking at is measuring your engagement. So you will have picked up by now, it's not just about views. It's actually looking deeper at your metrics and looking at the engagement and what's actually going on here. So whew, that was masses of content on posts and such like, but hopefully things that you will find very, very useful. And I would invite Stephen now to come back online and just see, I'm sure we're going to have a few questions about all of this. Yes, there's definitely a few um, here for you, Norma. Um, okay, doke so we'll just start from the top. Some of these, obviously, it's possible that you may well have already covered off and I might have missed it when, when the system decided well, to it's off. okay. I think it's just, it's good for repetition because there was a yes. lot to take in there, Stephen, so it's fine. Cool. Um, so Karen just asking, what is the importance of LinkedIn algorithms? The LinkedIn algorithms actually decide how much your profile and your content is shared across your network and who that is shared with. So just like the algorithms are the all important aspects for Google search and there's over 240 elements that go into determining where you will appear in Google search the same sort of thing applies to LinkedIn. So the algorithms within LinkedIn are determining who gets to see your profile, how much your profile is shared across the network, and how much your content is shared across the network. So if you want to get results from your LinkedIn activity, it's important to know <clears throat> how the algorithms work and what works best. Fantastic. Um, Miriam's just asking, um, how do I check my statistics? Your statistics will be on your page. Um, they'll, so if you go um, to your um, dashboard on your profile page and then on your home page, you'll have your statistics. But just remember, Maureen, you can actually, if you're, if you're stuck and you're not quite sure what that looks like or you can't find it, just go to the circle in the black bar at the top, click on help, and then drop in a question and it will be set out visually for you so that you get that prompt. Fabulous. Um, Paul is asking, um, hi, with regards to comments, Norma, do you recommend the pre-baked ones that LinkedIn provide and suggest? Um, if it fits, then yes. I mean, just an example of that, I always make a point of sending people messages on their birthday. Um, because they're usually people I know or who've been at workshops, etc. And LinkedIn will offer the happy birthday, da 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 da. But I always make a point of at least putting their name in if I'm in a rush or adding a sentence or two to it. Um, because I think, you know, a lot of the LinkedIn comments are actually just two or three words, and you want the words to be more than four. And actually, you want it to be heartfelt and genuine. So if you're going to do it, then then uh, unless you're really under pressure, do it properly. Excellent. Um, Karen just made a comment there just to say that she's already had a poll sent to her. So that's oh, good. fabulous. Excellent. Oh, Karen, you need to let us know how you get on with that then. <laughs> um, she's also suggesting that Word Swag on mobile is a low cost app with three images and useful to create images with text messages. Fabulous. Lovely. Word swag. Good shape. Thank you for that one. Um, okay, a couple of people are asking, again, I think we did touch on this, but um, they're asking about the golden hour for post. What is it? What, what's the specific time on that one? 60 minutes. So from posting your content 
on LinkedIn, 60 minutes from when you posted, that is where the maximum juice, that rocket fuel is injected into your post. So if you can get maximum engagement in that 60 minutes, it, the benefit is multiplied. You know, you're, you're getting the maximum benefit. So um, it's, it's really important to try and make sure that you're creating brilliant content, you're getting it out at a time where you feel your audience and it differs from business to business is going to be engaging with it. So, you know, if you're at night owl and you're posting content at one o'clock in the morning, it ain't going to do much for you because most people will be in bed unless you're working in a hospital where they're doing night shift and you know, everybody's on their coffee break and they're going to be, you know, rat rattling into it. So you, you've got to know your audience and when they're typically on, on LinkedIn and you will find that out from trial and error. But that first hour is really important. And it's important that you get that engagement with comments and using at least four words, etc. And, you know, it might be useful to just prime a few people when you first start doing this, oh, I'm posting in, in today at X o'clock, send them a prompt. Would you mind just putting a few comments on? There is something on LinkedIn called pods, and I recommend strongly against them. They are groups of people who come together to game LinkedIn, and they're, they're sort of mutually con commenting and, and, and using these pods to try and um, falsely inject um, benefit into posting and, and sort of game the search engines. Don't get involved with pods. If you get caught, you'll be banned from LinkedIn. Excellent. And just to kind of to build in a little bit on the goal now and posting times, Graham's just asking about what the best time is to post. But I guess that's more or less what you've suggested. It's, it's knowing your own user base. It's knowing your own user base, Graham. And, and that really is a perfect question for your customer profiling. Well, which social media uh, resources do you use? And typically, what time do you go on there? When have you got more time to read stuff? My audience, I know it's like seven to eight in the morning certainly before 11 there might be a little bit at lunchtime and then five six o'clock sunday evening cracking a lot of people are online on a sunday evening so you, you just find it out in time but that will vary from sector to sector that's part of your customer profiling fantastic and um, karen's just asking and um, please can you explain how articles published on linkedin increase seo for the website so a bit of a meet you on that for you because the articles and media content and just the way the tech technology is set up they can be in indexed by google's algorithms whereas posts are just on linkedin they're not fabulous um Tamsin's just asking, would you recommend using hashtags in comments or only on posts and articles? There's no reason why you can't use them in comments as well. Yeah. I have no research to tell you whether that makes them perform better or not. I think if you started to do that all the time, people yeah. might get irritated. But there's nothing, you know, I, I sometimes put a, put a hashtag in feeling very grateful. It's just something I do. And it's yeah. sort of more a sort of comic conversational, sort of conversational thing. But um, yeah, I, I, I certainly wouldn't overdo it. I think people will get irritated. They'll see you as trying to sort of maximize on it. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I think it's, if you're, if it's your post, you want to obviously get loads of people commenting on it anyway for the engagement purposes. Yeah, if it's sure. you who's commenting on somebody else's post, then in order to help them get the most traction, you obviously want four or five words in. If that happens to be a hashtag included, it's fine. But I think, as you said, it's not strictly on its own going to do much for you, which is part of that overall engagement and how much words you use, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is for sure. Um, a couple of people are asking about Hootsuite. So um, is it a no-no um, for Hootsuite, basically? Um, and don't get me wrong, I love Hootsuite and I've used it a lot. But on LinkedIn, yep, yeah, LinkedIn prefer you to post direct on LinkedIn. Like Instagram as well, isn't it? It's, a, it's another very sensitive platform. You can absolutely use them. And obviously for some digital marketing businesses, it's, it's probably a requirement. But course, how are we going to get better course. engagement? Either? And, you know, we're, we're, talking, we're talking about going <laughs> from good to great here. And these resources are fab. And if you haven't got the time, go for it. Use Hootsuite. 
it will do well for you but if you're getting really serious about your content don't do it yeah fabulous so just in that last couple of um ones left now norma and <laughs> thankfully for you <laughs> get a crash through them and um, how do you send invites on linkedin for workshops or open days for people to attend so sarah's just asking that one Ooh, i would I would urge caution and, and there is a section on LinkedIn where you can actually set up a workshop and you can invite people to it. And I did this for an event I did with the Institute of Export um, back end of last year, September, October. And I've, I've not used it since actually. So it might have changed. Um, I, I make a note to myself to actually look that up and I might do a post on it. The actual functionality is great and it's easy to use, but when the invitation comes through to your audience, so often they just think they're connecting with you. So you are actually getting signups for a workshop and you think there's X amount of people coming and then X amount don't turn up because they thought they were connecting with you they didn't realize they were actually signing up for a workshop and i think linkedin needs if they haven't already to do some work on how that is presented because it's just too similar and it does say workshop and it's logical but hey how many times do we not read something properly online uh, and the similarities are just too extreme uh, unfortunately we'd run everything through eventbrite it was just kind of a last minute push on linkedin and we thought we had something like 16 additional people coming and it was all good because we ordered extra bacon butties and stuff uh, and i think only seven or eight turned up and the other people said what event i never signed up for event they just hadn't realized they'd done it so i would just urge a little caution there fantastic um so Miriam's just asking um, that she can't find the statistics area and um, so she was just asking if you could show it obviously you might be able to because you've obviously got all the bits and pieces to do but um you know if, if you get a chance to Miriam would you be ever so kind because we're we, we we're, I'd, I've got quite a lot of questions to get through at the end as well yeah. could you hook up with me on LinkedIn and let's just have 10-15 minutes chat on the phone uh, and I'll happily talk you through a few things. Fantastic. Um, just a comment here from Grim as well. I'll pick this up in the, the chat as well. Grim was going to ask it. Um, so just a bit of a key point and hashtag. Some disabilities mean that these need to start with a capital letter for people to understand with, maybe with a disability. Um, so just maybe something that's worth mentioning to try and ensure that. Good shape. Thank you. Fantastic. Um, Karen's just asking as well, in relation to the question about articles and increased SEO for the website, does that just apply when the article is posted on the company LinkedIn page? I'm not sure I understand the question there. Can you fire that at me again? I think that what she's suggesting, I'll, I'll read it again for you now, but I think what she's suggesting is, is it really only um, relevant for the company LinkedIn page as opposed to the, um, a normal profile, I guess? No, 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 no. Articles definitely for both. Yeah. Um, writing articles as the go-to expert, somebody who's top of their game and knows their stuff is a useful thing to do, but it's not something that performs highly on LinkedIn for you, um, unless you're doing the promotion with posts and highlighting that article, and you could highlight the article on Featured, for example, um, but it will perform well for you in the search engines mm -hmm. because Google can index it. Fantastic. Just let us know, um, Karen, if that wasn't you know, exactly what you meant. Um, and that's oh, actually another one, I think, by Karen, or maybe a different Karen. Um, I've noticed that um, when some second degree connections like a post, I don't see an option to follow them. Is that as due to how they've been set up on their profile, basically? Yes. Yes. Yeah. It is correct. Fantastic. And then I think that we've only got one last one left, which is from um, Sarah, which says, how many hashtags can you follow at any one time? Ooh, that is a very good question. Um, let me, uh, and whilst we're talking, I will just see whether I can find that. I've got either 200 or 300. Oh, it's quite a few. Uh, it is a lot. It Just is as well, guys, there's a, there's a good um, kind of a link that Chris Pipes put into um, the chat there as well. Just on some um, 
LinkedIn Learning that's available for people. So that's quite useful. Yeah, the LinkedIn Learning section is awesome. I haven't got the number written down here, but it is several hundred at least. So you don't need to be worried about that. Fabulous. Um, just a quick one as well, Norm, while you're there, um, just from Peter in chat. Um, she, he's just suggesting here, thank you for three well-researched presentation. I learned loads. It's really good feedback. Thank you. Very good. Um, do, you, do you only use LinkedIn or do you use Facebook and Twitter to supplement LinkedIn as part of your, your offering? Um, I do little bits on Facebook. I have a lot of secure groups on Facebook for different areas of the business that I'm either involved in um, or, or running, but they are all secure. Um, Twitter, I, I don't really do very much on Twitter at all. Um, it's, it's, if I do Twitter, it's for my LinkedIn stuff. But that's just what works best for me and, and yes, my, yes. my businesses. Yeah. Fabulous. I think Karen's just kind of um, reiterating on her point um, is that should she, she really ask it, um, is it best for your SEO to have the article on both the company page and the personal page? Or oh, just I see. Okay. No, and in fact, please don't post the same content on the company page that you are posting on the personal profile. It should be different. It should be varied. No duplication of content. That will not work in your favour. Fabulous. And that's your lot for now. Great. Fabulous. Well, I'm going to wrap up because I've got a little bit more to share. Um, questions at the end. So, great. Thanks very much. Lovely questions, guys. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, this I love. When it comes to creating a campaign on your LinkedIn profile, Taken 3 have won one of the uh, most accolades for their campaign with uh, Liam Neeson, who went on to LinkedIn, and you can find it here, guys. He went on to LinkedIn and offered to hunt someone out and track them down and da 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 and review their profile and it's a fabulous campaign i'm not risking playing it live here just in case the connection doesn't work but just do liam neeson taken three linkedin and it will pop up linkedin really um paid this campaign huge accolades by creating a um fake profile for Brian, the character in Taken 3, uh, which was only one of two fake profiles on LinkedIn ever. The other one was for Santa Claus. So this is just a really cracking example of a, a fabulous campaign and how they followed through. So you can see all of that on, on that um, Vimeo link here. So about your LinkedIn content. So it's about keeping it simple, producing content regularly, distributing content widely, creating, curating and recycling so that you are not just creating because that's very hard work and working to a content plan and really producing content before you need it and oftentimes repurposing that content with different hooks down the line and remembering at the very least words, images and videos but if you are creating podcasts or animated things or presentations or such like you can think about using that as well now from your customer profiling and this is a very simple plan you will be able to jot down on a 12-month basis your key events what's happening in your business that's important it could be product launches it could be a new website going live it could be simply it's it's um, coming up to summer holidays and that's an important event in, in your business calendar. And then on the next row, jotting down clients' key events. And if you've got three, four, five different key client groups, you might want to put five different rows in for each of those client groups. Any key milestones that are coming up, that, that might just be general and is there anything seasonal that you need to take account of and if you map all of those key events out you will start to see some key themes month by month that are emerging and what I'd like you to be thinking about doing is to actually pick one theme for each month and you create your content and you create your content plan around that main theme now the lovely Pascal that I'm sure a lot of you know, 
has got his three tips for online marketing in action. Create a piece of content once a month and upload that, whether you're doing that to your website or your LinkedIn platform. We're talking about LinkedIn here, publish it. And then, you know, you're getting that um, reach out through other social media resources that can either be driving back to your LinkedIn profile or your LinkedIn company page, or it can be driving that content back to your website. But all created around a particular theme for that month. And at the back of your workbook here, um, on page, I need to check out the number 13, I've got a little plan for you. And for those of you that haven't got it there, this is what it looks like. Just a very simple plan of anxieties and aspirations. So this is time for you guys to jot down from your customer profiling, what are the top anxieties and aspirations for a particular customer group that you might be targeting. And at the bottom, you're then working out what tips and advice can you be giving to that audience based on those anxieties and aspirations. You know from your customer profiling that this is where your clients, your target clients, your A-list clients, key focus is going to be at the moment. So you're coming up with tips and advice. And if you want to have those ideas for social content, you can take that particular theme. So, you know, how to uh, do business development whilst working from home, for example, that is top of mind for a lot of people at the moment. And you can then create um, these simple posts, for examples, 10 things to look for when working from home. A three-step guide to selecting key target customers to interact with in times of crisis. Five questions to ask when. So you get the gist of it. It's really easy to apply this formula. And content that works really well on LinkedIn and particularly well on Twitter, like top 10 things, was um, the most searched for term repeatedly on social media resources. So they're the kind of short, easy, concise, almost list type format posts, you as the go-to expert in your field, sharing your expertise on LinkedIn. So they're the kinds of posts that work really well. You sharing all of that good stuff and that good knowledge with your audience. Now, typically, I'd be wanting you to be really kind to yourself and about 10% of the content that you create at the top of the triangle here is content that you are writing yourself. About 40% um, of the content under two is actually content that you are gleaning from. Remember in webinar two, those people that you are following and connecting with who are full-time content creators and maybe even from your influencers if they've got some new books or ebooks or things to share or talks you are looking at that content and getting the inspiration and using that content to compile your own content together maybe taking two or three different sources to create posts and to create articles so it's slightly edited it's not content that you are having to generate yourself, which is much harder work. And in terms of best practice, you always accredit the source, name them and provide a link back to their website or blog. And then finally, um, content that you're just publishing as is 50% um, where you're sharing, commenting, etc. but you are not actually um, having to create that content yourself. Um, and, and short, smart and simple is probably the best adage when it comes down to that. So you'll see from this approach, actually only 10% of it you're writing yourself, which is maximizing your time. 90% you're looking from inspiration and sources of content from others that you can repurpose to complement your content plan. And one of the things I do recommend that you look at quite seriously 
is finding between five and ten contributors who will be very happy to create articles and content for you. And with your 12 month content plan, you can give them plenty of advance notice with some prompts as to when that content might be required. So this will give you huge comfort that you've got a system and a process and some support to actually help you with what can be quite an intimidating um, piece, piece of work to, to get to grips with. Now, free resources that I think you will find really useful. Unsplash, Morgfile. So Unsplash and Morgfile are, well, Unsplash is almost completely open and free um, photography. Um, Morgfile send out 10 free images per month. Both of them want to um, share images that are not stock images, that are really genuine, authentic images. Unsplash, what they ask for is that you accredit the photographer, um, whether that's in a post or whether that's actually on your website, and they give you the code that you can easily copy. Canva, great for creating all sorts of content, templates, etc., is a fabulous resource. And Dreams Time, again, for sharing uh, images and different types of content, you can actually contribute content to Dreams Time as well if you are a content creator. And then we have four different uh, resources, similar web, you find something you really love, whether that's a website or a piece of content, you can go on similar web and actually search for more like that. BuzzSumo is a brilliant platform to actually check what type of content works best on which social media platforms. And that can be a brilliant resource. Um, they're not quite as open and free and accessible as they used to be, but certainly one that's worth taking a look at. Um, content that works great on LinkedIn will not necessarily work well on Facebook and vice versa. Death of the Stock Image, again, a, a man and husband couple who will um, send out um, images to you on a monthly basis and you can then pay to join as you can with all of these if you want more support and Pixlr is really great for photo editing. Um, there are uh, again here these resources I've mentioned them a few times. Quick um, which is great for doing um, captions on, on, on video and, and editing um, which I think you'll find really useful. Capwing again um, is a collaborative platform for creating images, videos and GIFs. We've got Rev, which is really brilliant for doing transcriptions, captions, and foreign subtitles. If any of you are ex exporting, that can be really useful. And there we go, Clipomatic, um, which um, is actually apollon.com forward slash Clipomatic. There we've got the URL now. Um, if you want to have captions to go onto your videos. So, um, Oh, and iMovie, sorry, one more which I'd forgotten about. Yeah, so iMovie, really great um, for doing um, movies on your uh, Apple devices. Now, planning, and then we'll look at um, some uh, questions that, that you may have. I'm just conscious of time here. So planning your 12 minutes a day. I recommend you do 12 minutes a day, different tasks on each day, and maybe one day of the week where you're actually looking at creating some new content. And I would recommend that you look to being on the platform um, at the times where you know the most of your audience is there and you're responding to comments and feedback at specific times. And being yourself, authentic, on LinkedIn is the key thing that you need to pay attention to. We're doing the hard work at the moment, webinar one, two and three, and helping you to prep and get your house in order and your profile looking great and your content ready and performing at peak. When it then comes to implementation, um, not only will it be easier in terms of effort and, and measuring, but you will also get the maximum return on this time and effort uh, investment that you are making. 
Now in your uh, workbook, actually towards the front on page four, um, where you jot down your SSI score, um, I've actually made some suggestions and, uh, and said that you uh, could be looking at really setting some SMART goals. And now we've been through the three webinars on LinkedIn, what would be some tangible, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, time-bound goals for you to set for LinkedIn, maybe over one month, three months and six months, uh, by way of getting your profile and everything sorted out, but then actually using this to generate leads. Because if you want, you know, um, three new pros prospective uh, contracts in a month, you're probably going to have to contact at least 20 to 30 people and start that process of engaging with your A-list clients. So setting out your goals will help you to get to grips with this. That is the link for your social selling index score. For those of you that don't have it, you can check it out there. And then finally here, your smart LinkedIn schedule, daily checking and responding to notifications, adding connections. Um, we suggest up to 10, but do you know what? Two or three a day is great creating one post a day, no more than that. If you do want to do two posts, make sure you leave at least three hours between posting the second post out. Um, comment on birthdays and use likes and shares. You might want to run a Boolean search in the advanced search every day and proactively look for your A-list target clients and engage in conversation with them and check out who's viewed your profile. One of the most powerful things for business development, if somebody's been on and looked at your profile, they are interested. So I always check that out, as mentioned in webinar one, and go back and if they're a match for my A-list client profile, I will review their profile, find some hooks, drop them a connection request, and engage in the conversation. It's a great source of leads. As a basic member, you can only see the last five people who viewed your profile. If you're premium, you can see up to the last 90 days. And then weekly, review your saved searches. Remember guys, you can save up to three searches a day. Check, uh, sorry, three searches at any point in time. Um, against your specified search criteria. LinkedIn then automatically weekly sends you the results. Check your SSI score. Um, always responding to acceptances and getting into conversation and maybe taking that offline to a meeting and working on getting and giving those recommendations. And then monthly, writing an article um, and possibly then, uh, or a free resource, and then uh, looking at backing up your data, I recommend you do that every three months, a process on LinkedIn, where you can actually download all of your contacts and all of your content from LinkedIn and use, at least keep it safe in-house and, and perhaps even use that as, as part of your um, other marketing efforts, albeit you must make sure that you are adhering to GDPR regulations. So, thank you so much, masses in that um, session. I hope you find it really useful. It's been such a privilege and a pleasure to share these three webinars with you. Thank you so much, I've really enjoyed it. You've been a great audience. I will be available after this if you have any questions through LinkedIn, but I'm gonna hand over to Stephen just to see if there are any questions remaining. Thanks very much, Norma. It's really, really good. I think we've only got a couple of questions. I think you've covered off so much within the sessions that um, I think everybody's uh, got all the information that they probably need at this point. Yep. Um, just the last couple. Um, so Miriam's asking, um, any copyright limitations when reposting other people's content when curating, or can I just share? Um, Always accredit the source, Miriam. So always name the person who's written it and provide a link wherever possible. Um, if that content was publicly available, as long as you do that, there should be no 
restrictions whatsoever. I would urge caution with images because uh, just because somebody else has used an image doesn't mean that it's loyalty, uh, sorry, royalty or license free. So take care with images because um, Getty images and others are pretty hot. And if you're using images without having the right uh, permissions in place, it, it could result in a, in a nasty fine. Fantastic. Um, Paul is just asking, um, why does every single comment and like you make appear as a separate post on your profile? And does this actually help your reach? Yes, it does. Um, so, you know, uh, uh, comments are three times more potent than likes and shares. And um, rather than replying when you are commenting, you're just maximizing the algorithm benefit that you get. It just gives it more vitamin C. Uh, and and it, 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 the, the comments are more powerful because LinkedIn recognizes those as proper conversations taking place. Um, so, it, you know, comments are the rocket fuel, at least four words, and keep that conversation going as long as possible. Make sure when you're posting, that the conversation actually starts up within that first 60 minutes, that golden hour. Yeah, excellent. Thanks, Norma. And um, how can you best back up contacts and LinkedIn content? Karen's just asking. You go to the help uh, section and request to have your LinkedIn content uh, sent to you. So you're actually submitting a request into LinkedIn and usually within a couple of hours, they will respond and send you a data file that you can then back up on your system. So the, the, the process is explained in there and it is pretty easy to do. But you, you are sending a request into LinkedIn to actually send that data to you. So if you go into help and just say export data from LinkedIn, it will give you a description and, and some visuals as to how to do that. Brilliant. And then um, this, that's the end of the questions. <laughs> We've got some, um, some fantastic comments um, just down in the chat for you. Um, Norma from Adasola, Graham, Mark, Sarah, Chris Pipe, um, Paula, Michael um, have all um, had some really positive things to say about the sessions. They've got loads out of it. Um, just saying thank you very much. And it was super. Honestly, it's been such a pleasure. You've all been super lovely to work with, even though I can't see you, but the comments and everything have been really heartwarming. Thank you so much. I'm super excited for you as well, just to see your LinkedIn profiles flying and, and hopefully you'll get back and let me know if you get some good results. <clears throat> and of course, the guys at, at, at <clears throat> the two partner organizations here. I guess maybe one day one of, one of the guys will have more um, followers and engagement than, than you, Norma. Yeah, I'm going to have to watch <laughs> myself. Yeah, <laughs> indeed, indeed. Okay, brilliant. Well, have a fabulous week, everybody. Thanks very much for hosting, Stephen. Thank you very much. Um, just before we kind of um, go, guys, I know there's a few of you, you still left there, just to make you aware that we've got another couple of webinars going on this week. So thank you very much to Norma. It's been fabulous. Three fantastic webinars. Um, definitely making the most of, uh, of our um, ability to get some digital content out to you. Much appreciated, Norma. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and just to let you know, guys, let me just get this information to you um, with a bit of um, a bit of quality. We have got um, a webinar tomorrow going on um, on SEO. So get your website found on Google. Um, and then we've got one as well later on in the week. I think it's on Thursday, which is on who are your target customers and where do they hang out? OK. Um, on social media so um same time same place guys i guess if you're interested in learning a bit more about um seo a bit more about um uh, finding your customer base then um feel free to engage with us and get yourself booked on to the um couple of webinars um on this week as well um, and just to let you know that the content is thick and fast and there'll be more the week after and then we start moving into um more or less another season of our of our webinar program where we'll have loads of other fantastic um different types of, of webinar content for you um, so thank you very much for um all being part of this it's very much appreciated and um have a good afternoon and a good start to your week guys thank you very much Oh, I think Karen's just actually asking how can we sign up to do the webinars. So dead simple, Karen, if you're um, part of the Digital Drive program, then it's just a case of dropping on the, web uh, the webinar, the website, 
and getting yourself registered for that webinar um, or dropping, um, uh, you'll usually get like an automated email inviting you to come to them anyway and you can just, just respond and get yourself booked on. But I think you're actually part of, I don't recognise you, but don't, don't cross-examine me if I'm wrong. Um, so I think you might be part of the DKE programme. So the guys at DKE, Audrius and um, also Rory, will pick that up with you. And if you haven't received an invite to the other webinars, then those guys, I'm sure, would be able to get you on there, no problem at all.